is proud to host the conference and we have done and will do our best to make it enjoyable for all of us. Our conference takes place in this beautiful House of Estates where the monthly meetings of the Finnish Academy of Science are also arranged. Uh, first, I will shortly tell you some facts about your host, the Finnish Academy of Science and Letters. And as you can see in this slide, uh, we were established in 1908. And the Finnish Academy of Science and Letters, we are the biggest and the most beautiful academy, uh, Finland's widest network of advanced scientific expertise. Our goal is to promote scientific research, academic excellence. encourage everybody to be active and express your ideas, your experiences and your concerns about teacher education. Our conference covers all fields of teacher education and it offers, offers a forum for science policy issues. I hope these two days would help us to get to know each other better and provide possibilities for future cooperation related to teacher education. And now I am giving the floor to the president of Latvia, Academy of Science. He wants to say something in this opening. Colleagues of Finnish Academy of Sciences and Letters, distinguished colleagues of all neighboring academies of sciences, rectors and scholars of this Eastern European and Scandinavian territory of the globe. We are meeting here in Helsinki and enjoying this hospitality, but we also are guests of Finland's 100th anniversary since the foundation of independent state. We are guests of a country who shares quite highly the education and scholastic skills and a country which can be a pattern and is a pattern for industrial and also uh, intellectual development. And uh, we really share this friendship among Baltic countries and Scandinavian countries, where Finland is also a very close friend of us and partner in many branches in education, in science cooperation, even also in industry, but as well as in politics. So in a symbol of recognition and thankfulness for that, I would like, in the name of Latvian Academy of Sciences, bring to you, but probably uh, it's quite a heavy, uh, the national Latvian identity documents almost all the ethnographic and ethnological materials collected from the 19th to 20th century and published in such uh, volumes, well, in a way it's quite heavy, but as you see that every cultural heritage is not an easy thing and that's why how to work in a bit modern, so this is a task of nowadays and future. Thank you very much.
when I was asked to be uh, a commentator, I was given advice that don't speak of the presentation. Try to find some personal viewpoints. And uh, this advice has been very good for me because teacher education, as you heard, has been a very close topic for me over 36 years. When I was nominated to professor of education, uh, it was called especially teacher education. And then I started to find out what teacher education really means. And I was started to read papers and attending congresses and finally I noticed that it may be anything. And the uh, only way was to, to start to build a conception of my own. Gradually a total conception of what teacher education is and how you can do teacher research in teacher education. In teacher education. And, and here is the beginning. You see that the teacher education process is divided into three areas. The first is theory. It means education, didactics, research, on education, and so on. And uh, if you compare programs in the, in the whole world, you realize quite soon that it's, they are very different. And the theory is uh, often, uh, quite often a very small part in this program. Subject matter, it's very important generally. Uh, the third part is practice, and you can also realize here that uh, there are quite many countries where practice is a very small uh, role in, in the program. But they should function in balance, of course. And they have personality and uh, at least in Finland we have the uh, advantage uh, that we have very many applications, applicants for this location. We can select only about 10% of our applicants can uh, start their studies and it's a very big uh, advantage. Then we come to the process where they are working in the school and the programs are uh, planned for this process. This, oh, this, this is the problem. And uh, if we think uh, what is the total consequences, we see that uh, there are some kind of products. But uh, teachers can be in a working life about uh, over 30 years. How can we uh, build a certain, uh, uh, such a program that we guarantee results over 30 years? So it's uh, nearly impossible. We must rely on further education and, and uh, uh, we must trust teachers that they continue the studies and they, they do something personal during the years. Another picture total process is from Duncan Bigler, a book from two famous uh, writers, The Study of Teaching. It's very old, 1974, but it uh, contains education must take into account all these things. Nothing can be left out, but uh, perhaps there is not enough here. But you can add details all the time, so it's not so important. But uh, many times you look at the outcomes and, and think that the outcomes are the learning outcomes. But here you see that the knowledge, attitude, skills and, and so on. And, uh, what is happening in the place of the working life. The process is quite long. And then 
if you think what research in this education really is, so we can find some uh, basic things. And one of our slogans has been research based approach in this education. And that means that uh, every study you need connected to that means that we conceptualize practice. Everything students or teachers are doing must be conceptualized and, and connected with research possibilities or questions. Then during the studies, continuous courses of research methods. Quantitative and qualitative methods both are necessary. And then overall competence of research methods so that uh, all methods are known, but uh, some methods are not specific. And what is uh, very apt to teachers is that uh, they do their work as uh, action researchers and use uh, uh, qualitative research methods in their own thinking. And uh, in, in the Finnish system, master thesis is an uh, uh, important point. Every student, past teaching student or, or subject teacher students, is uh, a master thesis and it is research master. So that they do empirical research and write a report on this. Uh, if we think of uh, masters in the whole world, so there are many kinds of masters and, and also such kinds of programs where no research is done. But the master thesis is our, let's say, the most important uh, cornerstone in our program. And then many times colleagues, uh, colleagues in the Congress have said to me that uh, teachers are not researchers. And uh, the research methods in the courses are not necessary, but uh, usually they have uh, understood research methods as uh, quantitative research methods. And so let's say as a conservative way of thinking. But uh, the modern way in teacher education is that teachers are practitioner researchers, and there are two phases. Uh, they are they are consumers of research. They can read, they know what the source uh, criticism is, and uh, it is a bit to understand the new research. And the other side is that they are producers of research, ability to conduct research. But they are not the uh, researchers in that way that they will write papers on, on or present uh, the ideas in congresses and so on. They are doing research for their own. And one of the important things in, in research uh, in, in education in Finland, at least, is that they, are, they have direct access to virtual studies. And there is a very big advantage that they can continue at once.
research. And I hope that the uh, best place is in the university for health teacher education. Uh, but uh, I will try to show only one example. The last, uh, our project, uh, how we try to change the teacher education, even in preschool teachers education programs. And this is our last uh, project uh, called LAMBA, uh, Latvian Acquisition, Latvian Monolingual and Bilingual Acquisition, uh, Tools, uh, uh, Theories and Applications. What we are doing together with students on the research base. Uh, in, oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, you know that Latvian is the only state language in Latvia. Uh, and uh, we have uh, that uh, there is a unitary system of education in Latvia and similar standards are implemented in all subjects uh, from grades 1 to 11 uh, to 12 but we have some problems first uh, not all children whose native language is not Latvian uh, acquire the language skills in preschool age uh, and parents try to uh, and to send their children to uh, kindergartens with uh, Latvian language uh, as, introduction, uh, as introduction language. And for many children, this is the only place where to learn and to use Latvian before schooling. And the second problem is that the number of children with speech development problems is rising. In 2013, uh, the examination process out of uh, 82,000 children aged 3 to 6 about uh, there was such examination process and about 7,000 children had identified speech disorders and this uh, number is growing and growing. Uh, one more problem that there were no normal reference early language assessment instruments available in Latvia and this problem is not only for speech therapists problem also for uh, preschool teachers and prospective uh, preschool teachers. And also, I would like to say honestly that the language acquisition as an academic discipline in Latvia also experienced uh, considerable changes. Uh, the main goal is here. Uh, and uh, this is our project, as I told, Project LAMBA. The conditions favored the researchers to come together from five institutions, uh, two universities from Norway and three from Latvia. Duration of the project, you see that the end will be uh, in April. We have one month's time <laughs> to work. Um, before starting, we, uh, needed to got per uh, we got permission to survey, to record so for, from uh, inspectorates, from parents, from the ethics commission. Uh, but the main uh, sentence here is we organized special workshops for students participating in this project. Uh, the project consists of some work packages, but I will show a short example, only one of them, my longest. The norm reference production accuracy test for Latvian speaking children. Thank you very much. And there, it's very nice to be here. I've never been, I've been to Helsinki before, but I've never been to this conference. My name is Camilla Lilza, and I'm a professor in science education at Halmstad University, which is in the southwest of Sweden. I don't have a picture but it's, it's the Swedish Riviera. We have long nice white beaches so and it's very much of a summer city. Uh, I'm uh, working as a teacher educator and a professor and, and a research leader of the group which is connected to teacher education. I'm also uh, here together with my colleague Jan Erik and we are actually in, in the same uh, a committee for school in the Royal Academy of Science, uh, which I think that Jan Erik is perhaps saying something more about tomorrow. So what I'm going to do now, I uh, actually emailed a lot with Lena about what should we present during this, this short moments, and, and uh, I'm not actually doing a review of the Swedish education teacher research, but 
I'm trying to put another perspective in to ask what is a research-based teacher education actually? Because this is a very big issue in Sweden at the moment. Uh, our government is very keen on us having education and research very closely connected. And uh, that's why this has been one of the biggest questions from our own research the last almost uh, 15 years or 14 years. But also for my work as being a teacher educator. Unfortunately, I'm not teaching so much anymore because I'm the deputy vice chancellor, but I'm hoping to go back to teaching very soon. But how can research actually support student teachers learning to teach? And that is a big question, both for research and for policy and for the teacher education. Um, and we have uh, a very large amount of educational research, both in Sweden, but for other countries. So what kind of research in teacher education would best inform policy and to what extent are teacher educators engaged in that research? And that's a very big question that we have been discussing, I guess, not only in Sweden, but in, in other places too all around the world. And for our university, what we, I won't say that we are the only one in Sweden, Sweden has 26 teacher education institutions. All are based in universities, or like we uh, have like the big universities like Gothenburg and Uppsala and Stockholm, and we have smaller universities like my university. But at every university, I would say that there is something going on uh, where research is uh, connected to teacher education. All our student teachers during the three to five years during teacher education are writing these big essays where they have research uh, courses in qualitative and quantitative methods like Prati said before and I think it's quite similar. We don't we don't have need to have a master thesis, unfortunately. I think a master thesis in teacher education is very bright because that you if your student teachers to actually write master thesis. But what I'm going to talk more about is how can you, as a teacher educator, actually involve your student teachers within your teacher education research? And not only because I'm asking the question, is the research-based teacher education, is that that I, as a professor, go in having a lecture? Is that a research-based teacher education? Or if I have an associate professor or a PhD working, having a lecture with the student teachers, is it that we implement courses in research-based practice in teacher education, or is it that we actually do research together with our student teachers, involve them in research projects, and actually write together with our student teachers? And that's the third thing that I want to talk a little bit more about, because that's what we've been working with for, for several years. That was my uh, research already in 2003 when I started, actually in 2000, at the teacher education in, in Halmstad. So I think that we as teacher educators and teacher education researchers has a lot, have a lot to say on uh, these issues. So, and I'm going to probably, I know that Perti know this man, the pedagogical content of knowledge. Uh, so actually I'm uh, going into some small frameworks that I think is really important in the way that we work with teacher education in Sweden. As we had the picture before, we have the subject matter, of course, and in Sweden the teacher education is quite integrated. We have subject matter, we have school practice, we have educational sciences, and that's a, an integrated manner of having a teacher education. We also have a short uh, teacher education for people coming in with their contents already. But what's been my own research topic, uh, I have a map, that's why I guess, I hope my slide is going to be okay. I, I already see that children is covering some of the text. But uh, what's been a very uh, important thing in my own teacher education, teacher educator practice has been, how do I actually make the student teachers Skillful, and, and how do they? How can we help them to be able to 
transform the content into student learning. That's the transformation which I'm very interested in. Because we have these uh, lovely chemistry professors coming in and teaching, and we have these lovely chemistry students that are coming out in school with a lot of chemistry. They know everything about chemical bonding. They know everything about chemical reactions, for example. But how do they manage to transform or even integrate that into student learning in school? So that has been my research question for the last years. And that's why the concept of pedagogical content knowledge became very important, not only for the research that we do in our group, but also for the teacher education that we're actually running, planning and designing. And that's, uh, I guess that this might be familiar for you, but this is the, the concept that lots of people now are working with in Sweden. Uh, at PCK has become an academic, accepted academic construct that represents an intriguing idea. PCK is the knowledge that teaches develop over the time and through experience about how to teach a particular content in a particular way in order to enhance student learning. And isn't that what teacher education is about? It is that we have, of course, general aspects too, but if you work as like I do a science educator, or my colleague who is an English educator, or another colleague who is a social science educator, how do we actually work with the student teachers to make to prepare them for that really, really complex world of school teaching? So I'm just putting two pictures on here which might uh, illustrate the Swedish teacher education or perhaps an international or or Nordic teacher education, where we have like pedagogical knowledge, which is educational science in Sweden. We have the subject matter knowledge, and we have the contextual knowledge, which is where the student teachers go out on school. And I think uh, that the, the, the challenge for us in teacher education is to help student teachers to actually integrate these three knowledge bases together. And you see that uh, there are different kinds of doing this. In, in some teacher educations, we have the student teachers go to the subject matter, the, the content institutions, and then we have particular courses of uh, education like PCK. And in some, uh, some teacher educations, we have all these integrated. And this is the way that we actually, I would say, have invented and designed our teacher education we have tried very, very, very hard, which is based on the research that lots of us in our university and our faculty are really doing, to integrate the subject matter, the pedagogy, and the educational science, and the school-based practice into uh, an integrated manner where we have experience and reflection. And in that way, we actually try to build our teacher education program on PCK. Are you with me here? So what, for one example could be, if you are going to, to, uh, to have a lesson about uh, <coughs> greenhouse effect or sustainable development, what content do you need to know? What content do you need to understand in order to, to make it understandable for your students? Who might be like 10 years old or 9 years old or even 16 years, 16 years old, not 60 years old. So, and these are the questions we, we try to, to work with, uh, which is also the empirical data for us as researchers. Because what we actually discuss, and I think this is a big question for all teacher education, is that the teacher education, like the level, the quality of teacher education, is also influencing the quality of the student teacher's professional knowledge. And that's why we, in 2011, we had a very big evaluation of the teacher education. And I worked with Pertu in that evaluation because we needed to reform the whole teacher education. Not because it had a bad quality, but because new ideas came in and, and all the 26 uh, departments in Sweden needed to, to apply for having a teacher education, which was very, very hard work for us. Everyone worked a lot for that. So just going from this big frame of PCK and that sort of thing, just to give you one 
very brief example of how we use these ideas in the teacher education program in order to try to respond to the question that in what way can knowledge gained from researching student teachers' learning experience influence the way teacher education is designed and conducted? Because that was, I think it's really important is that if we do research on teacher education or with teacher education or with teacher educators, we also need to implement those results into the way we design our teacher education program. In Sweden we have 26 goals, we discussed that during the lunch, like goals to, for the student teachers to reach during these years. Of course it doesn't give up much space to add goals, but how can we work with these things and, and also in a research-based way. So that's why we use the uh, two. I want, I want to give you very briefly this tool which we use a lot. And I will say that every student teacher at Halmstad University knows about this tool because it, it's a research tool and that is a way to work with a research-based teacher education to actually integrate research tools to the, to the student teachers to help them to develop their professional knowledge or their pedagogical content knowledge. So we have used a research tool, tool called content representation, which is a tool that actually helps student teachers or teachers, we have lots of projects together with teachers, school teachers too, to develop their pedagogical content knowledge for teaching particular content. That could be like English, that could be Swedish. How do I teach the difference between this? verbs and adjectives in school and all these things. We, need, we try to work with the student teacher to uh, help them break down their thoughts, their content into learnable units. And this is a core. I will give you all this if you want, but it's a very, very easy way. It's, it's eight questions that you map towards different big ideas. What do you intend the students to learn? Why is it important to learn these ideas? What else do you know about this idea? What do you think is the limitation? All these are questions connected to actually teaching a, a, a specific topic into school. So this is what we give the student teachers, where before they plan something, before they plan the school practice, and all these things are mapped towards big ideas. And this is all the uh, so how did we use the core? The core was used as a tool to make explicit the how, the why, and the what of the content to be taught, and further to stimulate student teachers' self-reflection. In my own thesis that I did from 2003 to 2008, the name of that was Learning to Teach and Teaching to Learn, where I studied 200 student teachers in my own program. It's a very convenient way of doing a thesis where you can actually do uh, work on your, your own on your own teacher education. But what we what I saw and my colleagues saw really, really hard was that the student teacher, we tell them to reflect on the teaching. We always send them out in school, please reflect on your practice. But they need tools to reflect. Reflection is a very complex thing. Reflection is not just in the just comes like that. Reflect, reflective skills are crucial for learning, but also very hard to possess. So that's why we understood that the core would have been a useful tool to help them to reflect. And this is only one example, but what we did was we have 23 primary science teachers. They were, they never taught science before, they were in the third, third term. And in August, they completed a course, this matrix, about to teach a particular topic to primary kids. And then they did, uh, all this, I see, because, uh, sorry for this, but they did a lesson out of the core, out of this planning, and this lesson was video recorded, and then the, they revised the core, they did a new core, and then they had lesson in school, they have one lesson and two lessons, the same lesson several times, and for every time they revise the core. Do you see how they actually go back to the core and write new things? And uh, the VSR is video stimulated reflection. So we work very closely with the two colleagues with these student teachers to make them reflect on why and how and what they actually 
actually taught and the important way it stimulated students' learning. And in the end uh, of uh, the term, we did, uh, they did a last revision of the core and then they compared the core one with the core four just to do a self-assessment. In what way they actually uh, developed their thinking, their ideas about teaching this particular topic. And this was really interesting because they saw in the beginning they had, did not have any experience and in the end of the semester where they actually be teaching the same lesson for about five, six times how they uh, actually developed in their ideas. So this is only a very brief example. So the core helped the student teachers to put a strong focus on what they wanted the students to learn and how to, to, to promote that learning. And isn't that what we actually want the student teachers to learn related to education? And this is a research uh, project together with the student teachers. They actually took part in writing. We published some things about that international papers together with my Australian colleague, but we actually published uh, papers in Swedish together with the student teachers too, where they actually made research proposals about their own learning, which I think is also a case of a research-based teacher education. So.
So stakeholders we in this case and it's a union people, municipal people, this this type of students or all, all the stakeholders of be involved. So the central even even in Finland we have a very decentralized system. You know that we have the national paper curriculum and the schools have to grow the local or, or municipalities providers of education. They have to build up the local curriculum. But it's also in each education we have very short we have had many sort of personal guidelines and new one is also many sort of personal guidelines at the local universities have to build up these education programs by themselves based on the research outcomes but also the strategies are about finding the process. We need pipelines, we need feedback, we need quality work in all kinds of processes. So when it is important to know and how to go there, they are and the big picture are we looking for a system that is following the accountability policy or are we more looking for the system that really for trust like our system, Estonia system and other Baltic countries I am sure that the trust is important in education so in the beginning of last year our Minister of Education nominated nomination letter, the ministry people wrote that we should analyze the research outcomes related to teacher education, teaching and learning. We should benchmark some strategies around us. We have been become familiar with the Swedish, Norwegian, US, many, many strategies all over the world. We should organize also national theory or national level brainstorming so that we should listen to people. What is the book for teacher education? And prepare a document, then develop a program for teacher education, and then support the implementation. So we have now the document, and we are just starting the implementation. We are starting the allocation of some 50 million euro for the process according to the new documents. And this work is part of the Finnish government program and part of the B actions. There is one B action in the field of education. The government program is a kind of strategy program. It, it, it doesn't say anything about what kind of strategy we should make, but they just mentioned that it is something that we have to look now together for this to put for future. Uh, one part of the strategy work, as I mentioned, was the literature review, what we know about teaching, learning, and engagement related to teacher education. Two colleagues of mine, Professor Ilka Musu from Turku University and Professor Auli Kork from Hesing University, they made this literature review. Of course, they communicate with the people in the committee, but, but they made the work. So I'm not able to go through the, what's coming out from the literature, but I have one slide taking some examples. So there is an evidence, we were discussing about the evidence that good teaching, good teachers have an impact on learning, well being of students, and even the economic growth of the nations. A lot of papers can be found on those fields. So the literature review recommends that we should better take into account the outcomes of the research of teaching and learning engagement, the use of education technology or digital tools. We should better follow the research on teachers and teacher education while we are planning our programs. And finally, the initial teacher education is just the beginning. Teachers should have better readiness for convenience by the professional development. So there should be something in the initial teacher education that gives readiness. And, and in the case of Kelsey, we have already heard about the research-based teacher education. We think that that gives readiness for consuming research-based knowledge in education. Also the practice, teaching practice and all of my lecture and maybe more modern type of action research type of approach design. So this was a literature review. And then let me already mention one funnel that this teacher 
effectiveness and professional teams, they are two ends in, in, in how we understand good teachers, quality teachers. The effective teacher they must follow into us in the kingdom. The teacher is effective if the learning outcomes of the students are high in the single model. And in our thinking, we follow more the professional teacher paradigm or model, and, and uh, there are certain characteristics like knowledge base, communication, readiness to learn new things. But this professional teacher idea is not actually the only the characteristics of an individual teacher, it's also characteristics of the educational context, how it is supportive for teacher professionals, how the principal, how the teachers are collaborating, and also the whole education policy. So this is also important to recognize what is our orientation for and how we understand teacher professionals. There are OECD research, in this time, it's in the middle of the policy papers and research papers, but they are telling a lot about teachers in Finland because Finland has participated in the OECD TALIS, like Estonia. And the OECD TALIS report introduced a kind of model for teacher professionalism. They introduced the professionalism index, and teacher professionalism depends on that model about the knowledge space. What, what is the knowledge in South Africa, collaboration, these kind of things. How autonomous teachers feel, how much they think that they are able to make decisions, and then the collaboration, networking. So these three components are describing how professional teachers are in the context of Thales. But we, we should remember that Thales research is actually done in the context of effective teacher paradigm. So they, the framework, if you read the framework, they are telling about teacher effectiveness and things like that. So it's not so well fitting Estonian and Finnish understanding of, of, of professional teachers. But anyway, there are questions. There are many questions. It takes one and a half hour to answer all the questions. And the questions are somehow located to those three components. And then you can make a analysis and have a look how autonomous teachers feel, how, how much they feel they are having networking and so on. So only the okay, Latvia has also participated, Estonia and Finland, and, and, and not Sweden but Norway. And let's have a look how teachers evaluate themselves. It's, it's very much based on teachers' self report. They, they are feeling, answering in the questionnaire how they feel themselves, how much they have autonomy, or what is the profession, the competence, and what is the, how much they are needed. So, Finnish teachers feel that they are not, they are not having so high knowledge base compared to many other countries. The autonomy is quite high, but what is lacking in Finland, according to teachers' self-report, is the network. You can see that the Estonian teachers on the right hand side, so they, they feel the highest in the whole countries participating in the Talis that they have a knowledge, they have autonomy, and they are moving better. Latvia is there between Finland and Estonia. So it looks not so nice from Finnish point of view, but always we, we, we think in Finland that teachers are somehow not taking the highest score, they are, they are somehow focusing on the middle of the scale, but this is just a speculation. And at least the networking skills and, and how much the teachers feel they are networking, that is lacking in our, our context. On the other hand, it's better to have also some other statistics. This is the, coming from the so-called adult visa. So there are real problems to be solved. It's not based on the self-evaluation. And there are problems in mathematics. And you can see that the, the blue bars are telling something about the variation in, in, in math solving, problem solving. And the red color is about teachers, how well teachers are solving problems. And you can see that Finnish teachers are pretty good in solving math problems. So, so the, what they are telling about the competence, maybe that's not the whole story, but they are really doing this all the And Estonia is not so hard here. So 
we should always be careful when we are interpreting the self-evaluation reports. They are telling something, but maybe not the whole truth. When we were preparing the new strategy, we were putting this kind of policy papers and research papers together and recognize some key challenges in Finland. There are challenges in student level, in well-being and engagement, especially in science and math. Active learning processes are part of so it. As, as it has been mentioned here, it's quite traditional teaching in our classrooms. Students are not in the center. Individual learners are important topic. It's a political topic, as Professor Terry already mentioned, that equality is also possibilities for all kinds of learners and a formative assessment that is lacking in our classroom. In a classroom level, the inclusion and organizing this kind of inclusive education, learning of generic competencies, it's, it's more like a classroom level challenge. So how to organize situations where students are brainstorming, collaboration, organizing inquiry activities together. It's, it's more in the classroom level than in the student level. And, and also the deciding of learning environments and digital tools. And school level, according to the studies, the planning of curriculum in teams together, that is lacking. And, and also we have been discussing the deciding and adaptation of educational innovations, there is also some lack. So these are the key challenges coming from the policy type of documents. And I already introduced something coming from the international research. And then, because this was a political policy, not political, but policy work, so we were not only looking for research, not only looking for international policy documents, but we were also listening to these people. In, uh, in uh, this kind of policy work, it's important to listen all and look for the kind of consensus towards where we are going. So we invite different kind of stakeholders, teachers, teach educators to come and brainstorm national brainstorming and we used web-based tools for this brainstorming and, and, and the idea in this kind of distributed web-based brainstorming is coming from the kind of research or movements focusing on the wisdom of crowds and the simple idea is that a large, large group of people are smarter than few elite so it's better to listen many people than just ask people, elite people not only the ministry people. So this is the way how we get a lot of ideas. There's a diversity in opinions. The opinions are independent because everybody's participating through the web page alone. The centralization of the, of the idea generation sessions. And also the implementation is more easy if everybody feels that they have been participating in this kind of national, national project for making the new strategy for teach education. And this is uh, in this book, we start of crowds, how they describe how, how the new ideas are adopted by the people. This is on the other side, you get the strategy, but how it is distributed and adopted. So people come aware, if they are participating, they come interest, they understand what is going on, they easily accept from it, internalize and I go, this ideas go to the acts. So this is what they are writing in those books. In practice, we send emails to those teachers, teach educators, stakeholders, and we ask them to generate ideas. What is important in teacher education? Everybody was asked to generate at least three ideas. And they were also asked to give some arguments why this idea is important in the next 10 year teach education. And after this idea generation session, the ideas were evaluated. In this system, there is a kind of machine intelligence, and the system is somehow grouping the ideas. It recognizes that these are the ideas that belong together. So, so it is not giving the final ideas for evalu evaluation, but grouping of ideas, group of ideas. And it doesn't give all those thousands of ideas to everybody. It is somehow 
taking 10 or 15 ideas for each people to evaluate. And, and if you have enough people, is there a way how to evaluate the big number of ideas? And, and there are many outcomes of this national brainstorming. This is one outcome. What the people are telling, what is important in development of each education for the next 10 years. So the people are emphasizing learning to learn skills, interaction and collaboration skills, applied new knowledge, student centeredness, this kind of things. And, and they are quite close to ideas we have that in national level. <coughs> there are also something that we have not earlier had. They are on the yellow background. Teachers should be better in generating novel ideas. They should be better in readiness for change. And also the partnerships and networks are important. So the scale, you have to school, the scale is from 65 to 80, so they are quite close. Also. It's not so huge difference as it is in the picture. So this was, was one message what we take into account while we were making the new strategy for teacher education. And the yellow, those, those readiness for change, generation of ideas, they are important coming from the audience. And teachers, teachers were emphasizing that in school life you should be better in recognizing the problems and solving them, overcome the challenges. So last year, October, we published the short document where we introduced the new ideas. So putting together those literature review, political documents review, benchmarking of strategies at the national range. The aims in our new teacher education strategy are in three fields. Pro and solid knowledge space is one. I will tell you so what is that. The second one is quite unique. That kind of things we do not have earlier in our strategy. So the expertise in generating ideas and innovation. There has been nice discussion already about that. And the competence for development of all the expertise and the school. So the school improvement is also important. So among those aims, it belongs to the solid knowledge base, subject knowledge, knowledge about learning, diversity, collaboration, digital and research skills, ethics, teacher ethics is important, awareness about school societal, societal connections, and research knowledge. They are the kind of broad solid knowledge base. Curriculum knowledge, creativity, curiosity, design and adaptation of innovation, and entrepreneurship type of thinking. That is something new. It's, it's not a new idea, but more and more emphasizing our, our policy documents. And then the level of the school culture, and also the willingness and competence for personal life or professional development. So it was discussed already. I'm not talking about that. So, just some comparison. So in the international literature, there has been already mentioned the teacher leadership movement. So when I have read about that, the literature is quite close to this finished new strategy. Maybe the strategy is a little bit more emphasizing this creative side, so it just will be better in generating ideas. But basically, it's quite close to that, that type of writing. And if I compare to Norway or Sweden, both countries are having the new strategy for teacher education. And Peter Pernilla already yesterday mentioned that there are 26 strategy aims. So it's quite close. It's emphasizing very similar things. Maybe, maybe our new strategy is a little bit more emphasizing the teacher collaboration and this creative way of working and, and innovative skills. But, but other way, it's quite close. And, and what, what we what already perfectly analyzed quite nicely that what is innovation and what is innovative way of working. But in this context, what we have been discussing in this education for the innovations are quite uh, it's close to Perfilla's idea that you put something together, you put one idea and another idea together, and that's an innovation. And in addition, this innovation is something that is solving some challenges or problems at the 
global side. It is not brand new necessarily. Never. It's not something that you are selling to other schools. It is something that is solving the problem. So this is the Finnish teacher, an example of an innovation that this school, we have been collaborating, I have been collaborating with this school and we have had a research project focusing on the innovative school and this is one teacher who is very proud. He has designed with other colleagues the use of smartphone in science learning in order to personalize so, use of smartphone, you are independent of the time and space. Personalization means that you personalize the age or the process or the outcome. So, you put two things together personalization, use of smartphone. And it is solving the problems. In a classroom, you have four or five students with special needs. So, that's, that's an example of innovation. Students are using smartphones in college collecting, analyzing, recording, and those who have difficulties in writing, they use the video recorder or audio recorder, they are listening that. So it's, it's a solution. Another example, I have designed with other teachers, students, and now the school collaborators, and here for the school community collaboration, in case primary students in this collaboration. And this is one way how to create a new type of learning environment. This is an example of the situation where school increased the collaboration with Elderly House. The student is introducing his project work to all the person. So the student has a real audience. He or she is not making the project work to the teacher, but an audience. An old person has some nice time with a young student who is introducing this. So, an example of educational innovation, how to open the school more to the society. And now, in Finland, we are implementing the policy. And, and now the ministry have just opened the call for, for allocating this 50 million euro for making work according to the strategy. And in the strategy, we had also the kind of action plan, very short plan. There are six areas we would like to emphasize in this implementation. And the money, if you are applying the money for this work, you should somehow follow those ideas. The first one is policy between teacher education. So there should be something, something common in pedagogical studies and pedagogical competencies from kindergarten to vocation. We should more think what is the teacher profession, what is the pedagogical profession. So then, so better, better fitting in pre-service, in-service, or initial lifelong professional development. There should be development plans for teachers, schools and districts. So, so according to Thales, in Finland, teachers have less plans for lifelong professional development than in other OECD countries. But the schools should have plans what they are willing to do, and according to those plans, Teachers should make own plans and there should be coherence in planning. And also, the school should allocate resources for supporting teachers like for learning. Selection is an important part of teacher education, how to select the <coughs> Those who are willing to study in the program, those who are willing to become teachers and work as a teacher. And this was, I was already emphasized many times, so there should be something that is supporting or more innovative way of working, I give two examples. And at this maybe we are not maybe organizing courses for innovativeness, but it's maybe more based on how we are making our education program, what kind of courses and activities we are having inside the programs. Collaboration culture, so there are many bodies, as, as we have already been discussing, who are each educated. There are teacher educators at the Department of Physics and Math, teacher education at our faculty, mentor teachers, and we have the municipality networks. How to make better links? How to make better links also with universities and schools? How to make better links with kindergarten, primary, secondary, location? Leadership. That's something we have not so much discussed, but that how they're supporting the leadership is for teachers, like for professional development. That's important. And what 
what he can do to make the cat better. We are just making the first steps in our university for starting the university level leadership programs. We have had some insert programs, but how to implement those ideas? I think teachers should also understand something about leadership. And research based teacher education. Perfectly introduced yesterday what are important characteristics so of teachers and teachers, skills and teachers orientation in the program, and the students to learn. Also, the training program should be based on the research outcomes. But maybe I would like to add something that also the way how we organize training programs, they should better follow the research of university pedagogy and research of teaching and learning. So that was my talk about Finnish policy. And I was able to follow the OECD and, and emphasizing the process, how we were approaching the new strategy. And I give some examples of the content, but maybe the content is difficult to adopt as such because the context are in there, but the process is there. Uh, we uh, have 
have some sources to rely on. And uh, as we know, humanities, according to the OECD classification, covers the uh, history, languages, philosophy, ethics, religion, art, and so on. But in contemporary world, uh, we can develop uh, these branches of science uh, separately. We speak about synergy, uh, we speak about mutual benefit, and therefore, in order to develop uh, uh, 21st century personalities, we have to remember what happened before our era, and therefore, humanities is a must for almost all teachers. Humanities nowadays are challenging. <coughs> we are developing so cognitive of humanities. Uh, 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 humanities are uh, uh, diversifying its research objects. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, observe the emergence of new disciplines. We use the new digital technologies and platforms. Of course, we are living in a globalized world. Uh, humanities nowadays are uh, uh, even uh, a decade ago. And how to convince our policy makers, and I have been on the other side of the barricades too, I know that uh, policy makers simply need facts and arguments. We first of all have to uh, show uh, this real difference between sciences and humanities and uh, to mind mind we still uh, may use uh, the old definition uh, uh, developed by Charles Snow. Uh, you see the difference between modern uh, sciences and humanities. And maybe the main difference is this different sense of achievements. Yes, humanities sometimes are past oriented, but understanding the past means understanding the future. And, uh, also, this difference between uh, a really team work and individual work matters too. We must accept the segregation between sciences and humanities. Yes, we have some different ways of thinking. Uh, we are doing research using different methods, uh, but uh, we also have to remember that narrow specialization uh, leads to narrow mindedness. And uh, we have uh, to uh, develop a meaning of responsibility. Remember this old saying that, of course, sciences could tell us how to blow the dinosaur, but humanities could uh, uh, say us, is it worth <coughs> doing so? In every conference about humanities, we speak about so-called cold war between sciences and humanities. And we observe uh, uh, some features in the future education too. Why uh, do uh, the future teachers of uh, biology need some uh, humanities? Is it true that humanities are being bothered by a job market? Yes and no. And if you uh, read the second quotation, yes, it's the reality of the University of Latria too. Uh, first of all, we built our house of nature, and house of letters is only being designed. No. But what does it mean for teacher education? First of all, we have to remember this double mission for humanities. Uh, uh, we work for uh, fatherland, but we work for global community too. And uh, globalization is in a reality, but reality in our own perception. And everything we know, everything we are doing for the is a contribution for this global knowledge pool. Of course, we have spoken about humanities in Latvia and uh, uh, about it, uh, their impact to teacher education too. And I suppose almost all countries around the Baltic Sea would uh, uh, develop uh, similar priorities. Uh, we, uh, in spite of our economic uh, differences, uh, uh, ideological inventory are developing uh, 
uh, using the same uh, path. Uh, but the question is, how do we could evaluate the subordinate role of the humanities in the politics of science and in the politics of teacher education? I don't want to speak about uh, funding. It's another problem. It's a problem we face every day. But I also support the point of view that first of all, we have to develop clear ideology, clear program, how to educate our teachers, and then by common efforts to find necessary financing for this. And. Uh, here in our pictures, what we don't want to see. The first picture is by a Latvian author. We don't want empty world without human beings. And the other is well known as Schultz's picture. We don't want the world led by uh, uh, humanoids, uh, by artificial uh, intellect, only by robots or by and therefore this could be called ethical dimension, could be called wisdom, must be developed among our uh, future teachers. And uh, I would like to end my uh, short presentation with the words said by Albert Einstein. I hope even representatives of science uh, couldn't believe in this because perhaps he is right indeed that knowledge and skills alone can bring humanity to a happy and dignified life. And humanity has every reason to place a proclaimers and high knowledge, moral standards and values above the discoverers of objective truths. And our task is to involve these moral values in our programs for teacher education and to convince our policy makers to hear this plan expressed by representatives of humanity.
describe this. Also, just today morning, together with Erika, we <laughs> created some one slide about research areas because I am very much uh, believing that the, uh, what you are researching, that you are improving actually or developing, because otherwise you don't know what to improve or to develop. And uh, of course, uh, research professional development starting from initial education, induction, and continuing professional development is quite broad topic. Uh, but uh, more and more teachers believe, identity building, built also teachers' life stories are becoming more and more uh, research areas or uh, interesting for researchers. Teachers are okay, emotions, job motivation, well being. But I guess that it's very important that uh, some uh, researchers uh, uh, think we believe that you can't research in the teacher, you have to see what is the interaction uh, uh, between teachers and students and how teachers' uh, strategies influence uh, uh, students' learning outcomes and learning, for example. And uh, teacher leader uh, and the school leadership and teachers' well-being, motivation, collaboration, these are quite recent topics uh, uh, we are researching. And etc. cetera, et cetera. So, this is about the uh, background, uh, and now about the today's uh, topics. Um, first, uh, I'm focusing on sort of paradigm shift in uh, this education, then uh, on the continuum of this education, and then contextual factors of this education. So, paradigm shift. Why do you have to change? I guess that uh, we here yeah, know this uh, answer and we don't need to, to convince each other, but if uh, you are communicating with uh, uh, other teacher educators, or with the school fairs, uh, or, or teachers having already 20 or 30 years of practice, we have to have very strong arguments to say that oh, it doesn't work anymore, that way we have to, to change uh, in our practices. And uh, these are challenges in Estonian education system, but I guess that this is quite worldwide and we can agree with you that we face almost the, the same challenges. Everything is for uh, change toward, uh, towards the student-centered teaching approach. And this is some kind of man mantra we are repeating this, uh, in every lecture, in every room. But why we need to move towards a student-centered teaching approach. Because uh, uh, we have to strengthen the connection between education and innovative economy, I would start from that perspective, actually. It means that uh, we have to think about future. And yesterday it was very nicely described that uh, we're uh, present teachers uh, preparing students for future life, but we don't know how this Uh, also, we have to uh, strengthen or implement the lifelong learning approach, and it, uh, this relies on teachers also, not only for students, because sometimes we are uh, like uh, uh, stepping backwards and just talking about others, not about ourselves. And of course, the uh, digital society is around, and uh, I guess that uh, it doesn't disappear. It, it goes worse. Okay, and based on these kind of, uh, ah, sorry, I didn't mention that uh, actually in Estonia we face uh, the problem that the uh, UGS profession is uh, not so popular in society, but I would say here that it, it's coming more and more popular because there are also several kinds of uh, alternative ways to become a teacher, and, uh, and uh, it's not so much about uh, uh, passing uh, Program, good curriculum, but it's more about uh, uh, getting uh, uh, knowledgeable and uh, professional. Uh, and uh, of course, you could uh, list several kind of uh, uh, competencies, new generation uh, need, needs, uh, but I guess this World Economic Forum uh, uh, illustration of which is very good. Uh, describing that uh, there are uh, certain competencies, but also uh, 
personal characteristics are, are extremely important. And sometimes we say that, uh, oh, we can't do with these personal characteristics, characteristics anything. But uh, definitely we can, because it depends on the process we are organizing in our classroom. is also very nicely uh, presented yesterday uh, by Swedish colleague. Uh, going further, there are so many literature uh, different concepts about uh, 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 teachers' professional development and, uh, and the new paradigm of uh, teachers' work. And, uh, and uh, always uh, we end up that uh, everything depends on teacher, teachers uh, and need to take uh, the responsibility to improve their, their practices. But do we give them the floor to, uh, to do that? And how we give them? Uh, what kind of conditions we, uh, we create for them? And maybe we should start with the questions. Is it routine, adaptive, or creative profession? And uh, routine professional means that uh, uh, we focus on efficient and effective teaching according to standards. Or adaptive professional means that we are acting in context and, uh, and uh, uh, the work is not uh, routine anymore and we have to adapt the strategies and, and, uh, and uh, teaching materials, etc. <coughs> but also, my personal feeling of uh, deep understanding and, uh, and feeling is that uh, teachers uh, are, are actually creative professionals. They have to research, they have to develop, and they have to come up with, uh, with a new initiative and new, new ideas. So, and one more, maybe, picture uh, uh, or, uh, or a concept to, to think about. Or, uh, yeah. we, we used to talk about behaviorism, cognitivism, and social constructivism, and nowadays we, we are talking about uh, collectivism. And, uh, and usually we are talking uh, about these concepts uh, with student teachers, how they work in their classroom. But what about teacher, uh, teachers or student teachers? Do we also consider that we have to make a very strong uh, paradigm shift? And uh, if we really would like to uh, focus on uh, innovation and uh, as leaders, for example, and we would like them to, to work collectively. So it means quite radical changes in our teacher uh, education. And uh, uh, we could say that uh, uh, in the two first paradigm, teacher is more like under control. But uh, in next paradigms, they are more in control. So they are actually I really like uh, uh, this uh, uh, mental exercise, if I may say. So my very good colleague Marcos uh, uses this uh, uh, trying to, to convince people that uh, if we are organizing, uh, for example, initial training or professional development courses for teachers, we, we should consider is this process more uh, uh, under our control or in our control or teachers control the process? Do they have choices to decide what is the important for them? Is it more individual uh, responsibility, so to say, or is it more like a collective responsibility? So uh, I would prefer, of course, that we are acting let the top area know than, for example, in, in town, uh, uh, right top area know than the town left area. And, uh, I guess that uh, we are in sort of everywhere. So uh, I would uh, conclude that uh, this paradigm 
community rich education actually means that uh, uh, teachers learning is uh, has close connection to every uh, day or daily practice and uh, and uh, concerns in schools. Also, they have ownership and control. So the teachers are in control, not under control. And, uh, and of course, uh, teacher learning is active and, uh, and also inquiry learning, collaborative and, uh, and balance uh, between uh, theory and practice and embedded in school policies and improvement. And before I go further, I, I would like to ask you to think about Do these elements rely on initial teach education and also to continue professional development? Do you agree with me that actually uh, these elements uh, are valid or for both for initial education and for teachers for professional development? Okay, thank you very much. Maybe I could uh, end my presentation now, but <laughs> as I, I have one, uh, uh, one very personal message to you, uh, uh, and I am introducing my, my journey, uh, if I may say it so, that uh, if we are talking about continuum of teacher education, uh, uh, because like, uh, almost like that, <laughs> I'm joking because once my, uh, my colleague said that it was 10 years ago and then he, he, uh, she started to think and said, mm -hmm, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> But uh, uh, then I made my, my doctoral work about the induction program. I, I elaborated or designed this uh, continuum of teacher professional development and I studied with the initial education and I, I saw that the main message in literature or uh, challenge was how uh, uh, to link uh, theory and practice in initial uh, teacher education. <coughs> Then induction, it's more about socialization and cooperation. And, uh, and it's not so, so much about uh, learning new strategies or developing your practice. But if you are becoming a teacher in, uh, in, in, at school, in new organization, first step is uh, socialization at becoming a member of that organization. And then about continuing education, self-reflection and analysis uh, is like a main message or a, or a mantra. But uh, time is going on. A lot uh, uh, is changing around us. And uh, then I prepared today's presentation. Actually, I, I, I found that the situation is uh, quite... Uh, In initial teacher education, we don't talk anymore about so much uh, linking theory and practice. But we are talking about uh, identity building and readiness to improve own practice. So, because, you know, theory and practice both are changing very fast, actually. But uh, we have to develop something that uh, actually teaches. Uh, Use uh, what is very important for teachers in their future life. And also, induction is uh, more about uh, conceptualizing own teaching and uh, collaboration with other teachers. But uh, anyway, it's uh, somehow the game with words that uh, cooperation and collaboration are two different uh, types of meaning in the English uh, literature. And continuing education, it's not so, uh, so much anymore about analyzing and uh, reflecting, but it's more doing actual research and uh, taking responsibility, not uh, only uh, on your own teaching and learning, but also like uh, leading uh, some small groups at, at school and etc. So, and the induction now. Uh, uh, we, we made the uh, Uh, research to develop with Erika also uh, 
some years ago in Atlanta, we researched uh, 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 primary school the, the student teachers uh, from first year to up to five year, and we really found that this is uh, uh, journey by percent as a teacher in those studies. So it's more about the, uh, it's about the identity building and, uh, and uh, we found very critical points during the journey and it gives us very good information how to do 